Hey guys, the objective of this video is a very brief introduction to earthquake loading. Earthquake loading can be found in AS1170.4, AS1170.4, 2007, Structural Design Actions, Part 4 is Earthquake Actions in Australia. Now, this video is just a very brief introduction to um, the basic concepts of earthquake loading. Uh, the next couple of videos are going to be a very comprehensive example, going through the code and looking how to find all the different things. But I just want to uh, introduce you to some of the basic concepts. So. Earthquake loading works like this. The ground beneath our structure is going to feel some type of acceleration. So the ground's going to accelerate beneath the structure. And what that does is it causes our structure to sway back and forward. Okay, and this is a typical dynamic type of loading. So if we were to plot this, we would have time against displacement. So the displacement of our structure is going to be some type of like sine curve, right? It's going to go and sway back and forth like this. Okay, now because it's um, a dynamic load, it's actually quite complicated to assess and work out. So what the code does, it gives us this thing called the equivalent static force distribution. The first thing we're going to be doing is based on properties of the structure, like its importance level, like how important the building is. If it's a nuclear reactor, it's very, very important. Or if it's just some type of barn in some farm, it's not that important. Okay, so based on things like how important it is, where it is, so based on like its location in Australia, and also say the ground conditions, that's important for the earthquake. All these different factors are going to um, allow us to work out something called the uh, earthquake design category which is very, very important. And then based on all this type of stuff, we're gonna work out the base shear. So we've got, it's gonna allow us to work out the shear force at the bottom of this structure. So we're gonna get a shearing force like this. And then from that, we're gonna be able to work out something called the overturning moment. And the way it does it, it's through this thing called the equivalent static force distribution. So what the code allows us to do is that we work out this base shear, and then we d distribute this base shear up the structure like this, such that the sum of all the forces equals the base shear. And then based on these forces and their um, corresponding lever arms to the bottom, we can work out the moment that these forces cause, okay? So the basic process is understanding the site and things like importance levels. We're then gonna be able to work out the base shear, okay, which is, uh